This study, the workplace masking experience of autistic, non-autistic, neurodivergent, and neurotypical adults in the UK, takes a look at masking at work. What is masking? Not that kind of masking, no. Masking in this context is pretending like you're not autistic. It's a survival skill. It's a survival technique that autists use to be in the world as much as we're able to. The study wants to look at the nuances of masking at work and they found eight themes. So what I'm going to do is talk about the population of folks that they were looking at and then let's take a look at these eight themes. The folks that were participated in this study some were self-diagnosed. That's awesome. Um, the study does make a distinction between autism and other kinds of neurodivergence. Many, many, many more women than men in the autistic group. Neurotypicals earn more. No surprise there. Next, we'll look at the themes. This is their chart of the eight themes. Masking is at the center. Value of openness. A desire to socially integrate avoiding discriminatory treatment to have better outcomes. This is why people mask. Um, the detrimental effects to our well-being. Presenting an inauthentic self. Unique situation and it is widespread. This theme of openness. Several folks mentioned how important it is to be able to be open and honest about an autism diagnosis in the workplace. Unmasking was also referenced as a way for participants to, and I'm quoting here, exhibit their autistic strengths to non-autistic colleagues and improve the acceptance of autistic differences. You know, because we have to be valuable, of course. Both autistic and non-autistic neurodivergent participants recognize the importance of having a formal diagnosis when choosing to unmask traits in the workplace. This genuine acceptance of difference was a theme, and I just wanna read you a quote by one of the participants here. Socially, I don't have to do it as much because my friends and family know who I am that I'm autistic and don't expect me to be different or more. Someone else mentioned at their organization, colleagues were supportive once I had a meltdown, scared of moving to another organization in the future in case they don't understand. We'll talk about integration next. Second theme of this research is a desire to integrate socially. Three subsections are fitting in with the norm and that has to do with using masking as a tool to deceive so that you think we're normal. Even though we are normal, we're just different. Some people want to just blend in, others really want to participate deeply and that masking assists with that. That we can be motivated, this desire to fit in can come from inside, a desire inside, but it can also come from a desire to be accepted. Intrinsic, extrinsic motivation, you might say. Some participants mentioned that continued masking is necessary to continue having a relationship. It's exhausting. Attempt to avoid ostracism has to do with being rejected. With the thing where we get it right for a little bit, we fit in and then it all falls to sh It's a thing at work, right? Like part of success is being popular. And all of this impacts an autistic's capability of being popular because masking is deceiving. Yeah. That's me saying masking is deceiving. More themes from this study, doing three and four together. Avoiding discriminatory or prejudicial treatment. There's a fear of being bullied. We bring our past experiences into this. This is about masking autistic traits at work. These are researchers that looked at autistic individuals, neurodivergent individuals who are not autistic, and neurotypical humans. We're avoiding perceptions and stereotypes. Very concerned about being misinterpreted. This is a thing that happens often with autistic individuals. I'm going to be treated like an equal, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's try not to condescend to the autists. Let's, let's go for equality. This insufficient understanding has to do with the lack of awareness around what neurodiversity is, how it shows up in the workplace, the support that we need, but we also don't want to be a burden. 
around explaining what's going on. It's about competence, cultural competence. Absolute link between masking and employment. The higher masking, the more employable. Mm -hmm. Financial pressure is a huge factor in masking because we need to survive. We need to eat. Many participants expressed concerns about not adhering to workplace norms and how that would impact them financially. I'm going to be perceived as competent, as adding value. Quoting a participant. Now we're down here with the fifth and sixth theme around adults who mask autistic traits at the workplace. Fifth theme has to do with it being detrimental to well-being. And number six is about authenticity. So let's look at detriment. It is exhausting to pretend to be neurotypical. It is exhausting. Some participants acknowledge short-term benefit of masking in isolated scenarios. The overall sentiment is that masking is too demanding to sustain in the long run. And then that influences our quality of life at work and at home. Um, it is challenging to mask sensory processing stuff. So that can be physically exhausting. It takes emotional labor. There can be severe outcomes like meltdown and burnout. And then number six, being authentic or inauthentic. So participants likened masking to the role of an actor, taking on a different persona that might be entirely separate from their true self. Some participants felt pride in their ability. I've shown that in the past. Interestingly, the predictability and structure of workplace settings made it easier for some people to mask. That makes sense. Ah, but then you feel like a fraud. Yep. And that you're not true to yourself. Yep. And that no one really knows you. Also accurate. Let's just finish out the last two, shall we? Unique situation. So this theme is looking at the nature of masking at work based on masking just socially. There is not a lot of choice in the workplace. Lots of rules, lots of standards, hierarchies, timesheets, all that stuff. So that constrains the experience of masking. Makes it like really have to be a certain way. For some folks, they're only masking at work. This is a widespread phenomena. That's the eighth theme. Wide, wide, widespread. Some participants viewed masking as a continuous strategy reported having to consistently play the part of a role regardless of where they are. And it's habitual. We just get used to it.